Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the new shotgun Cedo, the signature weapon of Lavos. Both of them dropped with the new Operation Orphix Venom recently. This is a very interesting and unique shotgun that has a secret perk. It has built-in condition overload into its shots. This actually makes it one of the strongest guns in the game, being able to pull off crazy hybrid setups. Now you may have seen this build floating around lately, but I would not recommend using it, as although you have two strong elements set up on the weapon and a ton of status chance for the alt fire, I feel it really doesn't live up to the full potential of what this weapon is capable of. Yes, you have two extra statuses here with the glaive, alt fire also being able to force proc all four basic elements and its innate blast, but I still think it can do much better. So let's take a look at a different build. Now I've set up your actual basic viral hunter munitions build. Yes, I know this is your cookie cutter thing, but I actually don't feature viral hunter munitions on my channel that much as I usually there are more cool ways to set things up. But the thing is, this weapon just completely curb stomps everything else. It produces so many status procs and you don't even have to mod it for that. So with it being fully self-sufficient, what stops us from going on a full crit viral hunters munitions build? Now I've chosen to run Laser Sight as on a Viral Hunter Munitions weapon. You want as many multipliers to fuel the slash procs as possible. You have your critical hits, but you also want your headshot multipliers. So since you're already aiming there, Laser Sight should come as second nature to you, only requiring a little bit of ADS, which just makes it easier to hit heads. It's naturally stronger than Blunderbuss, so I thought it was a better choice. We're going to be slotting primed point blank on this weapon. You may be wondering, why would you slot this on if on a condition overload melee you don't slot primed pressure point? That's a very good question. That's because melees have blood brush and weeping wounds to scale off their combo multipliers, but shotguns don't have that. So then the next best thing is to slap on that base damage, else you're hitting like a wet noodle without much scaling for more status procs and crit chance. Then we're going to slap on Hell's Chamber, which functions not only to increase our damage, but also to fuel our slash procs with more status. Then obviously we're countering our laser sight with Prime Ravage to increase our critical damage. And then I'm running Frigid Blast. The only reason why I'm running this mod is actually due to my polarities, otherwise I would have run Chilling Grass, because you really don't need to mod more status chance on this weapon due to how its alt fire works. Then I'm running Contagious Spread to produce Viral and finish off the the build. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see that we've lost the radiation element on the alt fire, but that is okay. We are still getting all those force procs and we've exchanged one element to being able to run extra crit and a hunter munitions setup. So let's spawn these level 145 corrupted heavy gunners for our test. I'm gonna shoot at the head and you see laser sight instantly activates. And I only put six bullets in. Look at how those crits and headshots fuel these slash procs. It just kills these corrupted heavy gunners so easily. We don't have any buffs or any arcanes or anything else going on. Now, if you throw the alt fire into the mix, you can see that it instantly maxes us out at 10 viral procs. We also have seven different status effects present, and this is because the glaive bounces a total of 11 times and has semi-homing between enemies in the proximity. It also has a 6 meter radius explosion, so you just get huge stacks of procs and crowds. This lets us one-shot these corrupted heavy gunners when you shoot them in the face. Pretty big difference to not using the alt fire at all, isn't it? Now you do need at least two enemies for this to work because if you shoot just one, the glaive will just bounce off into the distance and then eventually come back without ricocheting on anything. The multi-shot affects the alt fire as three separate glaives flew off into the distance when I shot it. Two enemies is enough to set this up as you can see the full 11 bounces when I shoot between them. And then if I shoot it in the head, it is enough to kill it as I shown before. If I shoot towards the body, three shots would have been enough to kill that corrupted heavy gunner. The semming homing capability of the glaive seems to affect its travel path and in rare cases you can actually miss the glaive shot despite aiming directly at an enemy. Now how about some other builds? 
Well, you can also go for Corrosive, which obviously will work, or Radiation, which you may be thanking for more upfront damage if you fuel Viral through other methods. This works very well on Lavos where he can hold down his 1 and 2 to infuse his next ability on Viral. This is a range built Lavos, so by using my Viral Rush I can push out a ton of Viral procs in this area. It still seems to fare pretty well against these Corrupted Heavy Gunners despite not getting an armor type bonus, so you can only imagine what it would do against Bombards. So long as we have a Viral proc source from these abilities, then it works perfectly fine. Now how can we make this build even better? First, let's take a look at Arcanes. I'm going to slot in Arcane Rage in the first slot. This is an Arcane that has a very low proc chance on headshots for increased base damage, but because Cedo is a pellet based shotgun and we're already aiming at the heads to fuel our slash procs and set up laser sight, it's only natural that you're going to get very easy procs on Rage. Our other Arcane is Arcane Tempo, and because this is a crit based shotgun on its primary mode as well as being pellet based, you should have pretty much 100% uptime on Arcane Tempo as well. Spawning our enemies and setting up viral procs with our viral rush and then shooting them, you can see that we instantly get that arcane rage and tempo procs. It's very easy to kill the enemies and even on that last corrupted heavy gunner where we lost our status procs, I can still finish them off in a decent amount of time due to the fire rate and base damage buff. Now let's take a look at what corrosive damage can do by itself, which works much better against corrupted heavy gunners than bombards. Do note what the amount of corrosive procs we can get, we're still going to strip a fair amount of armor off the bombards anyways, making it probably the better choice instead of radiation. This time I'm using my 4 to set up the viral procs, and you can see it works very similar to our pure viral weapon without abilities earlier, where we're pretty much one-shotting the corrupted heavy gunners. But if you actually pay attention to the damage numbers, we're actually doing about twice as much damage as when I went full viral on the weapon with no abilities present. This is strong enough that if I set this up again, I can actually spray at the body instead and still kill all of these corrupted heavy gunners with just a little over half of the magazine. Using the ability and spraying at the body does pretty much equal damage to modding purely for viral and not casting the ability. Another interesting perk about this weapon is it has insane fall off for a shotgun that doesn't start until 26 meters. You can see here I'm marking this enemy and I can still spray him down with the magazine and kill him off. And actually, I can choose to just dump in half the mag and produce a ton of status procs, and the remaining slash procs will be enough to kill him off. Now if I come down to the 20 to 30 meter range, which is a decently effective range for shotguns that don't have as much fall off, one magazine is now enough to shred the entire horde of corrupted heavy gunners, as I pretty much have zero fall off so long as I run projectile flight speed in the Exilus, although you may want to consider running minus recoil instead, as the weapon has a decent amount of kick. One last thing to mention about this weapon is it has slightly less AoE than Bubonico, so you get less damage spread. But this is fine because you get massive AoE from the all fire that you're going to instantly mow anything down with the primary mode afterwards. So now let's take a look at what I teased earlier today. The Eidolon build. The weapon that I said could replace Bubonico, being a pretty much perfect clone but hit scan, which sets it a cut above the rest. With the Bubonico sitting at rank 3 and the original top 10 off meta primary weapons, you can only imagine where the Cedo might sit in my analysis. The Exeltra outdamaged the Bubonico ever so slightly, but it had ammo problems and a weird arcing path. So how good can this weapon exactly be? Well, let's find out. I'm going to run the weapon with primed point blank as I mentioned earlier as shotguns don't have blood rush or weeping wounds. Then again remember this is Eidolons we're talking about and they're completely immune to status so we need base damage mods no matter what. Then we're going to follow this up with prime charge shell and incendiary coat to make radiation. The reason why I'm actually modding on radiation instead of just heat is because I want to take advantage of the primed elemental mod as well as shotguns not having a good corrupted base damage mod equivalent of heavy caliber. Vicious spread only gives 90% base damage instead of 165 so it's just not worth using. They also lack a secondary crit damage corrupted mod like pistols have being hollow point so I really have no other option. Then I'm running Hell's Chamber as our primary source of multi-shot. Next is Prime Ravage for that critical damage that we always need in hunts. 
I'm following this up with laser sight as it gives more than blunderbuss and it functions identical to argon scope. You have a ton of downtime to set this up before the next limb rotation. Then I'm running shotgun spaz for that extra fire rate which I'll be stacking with arcane tempo and hopefully in a real run haste motes as well. Finally, I'm slotting in Vigilante Armaments to secure more multi-shot as there really isn't any other mod left to slot in. I'm running Fatal Acceleration to get that increased falloff. This will ensure I get 100% damage at all times as Hydralis is never more than about 30 to 35 meters away when it's on shore and even when it's spawning in the lake, it's only about 35 to 36 meters away. For the Arcanes, we're running the same as for our normal gameplay build, Arcane Rage, as I will easily proc that with this pellet-based shotgun to the head, and Arcane Tempo, where we want to put out as much bullets as possible since I'm certain we do not need one magazine to break this limb. This is your standard cookie cutter Volt Prime with 243 strength and vigorous swap. I will not be using my helmet as I do not think it's needed. For your support pistol, it doesn't really matter what you use because the weapon is so strong. The reload is fair, but I guess you can slap on synth reload if you want. Don't expect to have to use your pistol much for this type of run. Now you can always run Sarpa for more damage, I just do it out of habit for shattering impact to strip armor, and then Prime Fury, Gladiator Vice, and Quickening to speed things up. Amalgam Organ Shatter to speed up my heavy attack if I accidentally use it, Tech Gravity to pull in bombs if I want that passive, Modus Impact so I get anti-knockdown resistance while I'm in the air, and then my Riven to speed up the attack speed even more, although it really isn't needed. Now I'm gonna bring my Darza to simulate Harrow's Covenant. I know it doesn't fully represent the water limbs, but you will still reach about 50% crit chance, or nearly there, by proccing the head immediately before you break the water limbs. So now let's spawn our 110 Drakar Manic Bombards for this test. I'm not running any corrosive projections, as this test is supposed to represent solo 0 CP terror list. I cast my Shock Trooper and shoot the head to proc Laser Sight and Arcane Rage, as well as Arcane Temple. Then I place my shield and Vigor Swap and shoot the thigh. They die near instantly and one magazine is enough for me to spray down this entire horde of bombers. So you really have no shortage of damage in the magazine, and the fire rate and firepower is clearly there. So you can only imagine what this weapon might be able to pull off with Helmet. I won't be using it because I think it's completely unnecessary with the firepower this weapon has. Say hello to the new top 1 best off meta Eidolon primary weapon. Now for Rivens, <laughs> this weapon is going to sit at 0.5 for a very long time so don't expect much to come out of this. The only real options you have is crit damage multi shot or fire rate and you're probably only going to run a double stat neg since triple stat neg at 0.5 dispo really isn't that effective. In conclusion, this is an absolute monster of a weapon. It is a must pick up from the operation because who knows when it's going to come back or if it's ever going to come back. So now's your chance. Stay tuned for tomorrow where I'll be taking a look at Lavos and showing you what he really can do. That's it for this video. If this is your first time tuning in, consider dropping a like and commenting, or better yet, subscribe. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.